hadn't been, I don't even know if I've been at all this year. It's been around Christmas time when I was up here last, so everything's just like I left it. And it's nice and quiet. It's as much driving and traveling as I've done the last couple months with moving and going to Florida and all that. It's crazy to think that there's still stuff that remains untouched. But uh, no four wheeler this trip. It's just, I sold the Chevy. I never told anybody. Sold my old Chevy truck and done some stuff to the Jeep. And it was great pulling the camper up here. Um, the camper is still not my long term solution but I need to hang on to it right now while I decide where I'm going to stay and when I'm going to be living in it for a little bit while I'm building something or a lot of a lot of decisions to make and I've been kind of hectic just trying to set up shop and make videos in the environment I have right now because I didn't take that into consideration it's like yeah I'll go full-time YouTube and sell my house and build something and there's that whole period in between that I have no idea how long it was going to be and didn't realize what a setup I had before at the house with for filming and doing the RC stuff. I mean, it was if I had an idea, I could walk out and start filming instantly. So it's been definitely a tough transition trying to get two videos out a week and and uh, yeah, still try to find time to look for somewhere to live and all this other crap. Still dealing with stuff with the house. It's finally just about done now. So we're gonna come up here and relax. I think my goal this trip. I've got to get the camper up here so you can see where the road is back there. And I usually camp in this little section here between these narrow pine trees, but I've got all this. And the main goal of all this is to be able to pull straight in. Cause right now I have to jackknife, disconnect the trailer. It's a big pain in the butt. So if I could just pull straight in here, come over here and swing around and then set up camp like right here where it's more level. And that would be ideal. So I think what's gonna have to happen, I've been trying not to take any of these good sized pines, but well, this guy's gotta go. And this thing's gotta go. And then I should be able to make that turn fine and get up here and hopefully go around this tree because that's bigger than I'm equipped to cut right now. So hopefully I shouldn't have to take anything else over here. I'm gonna have to dispose of this one and knock this guy down and some of this little stuff back here and over there and hopefully we make quick work of it that way I can pull the truck in here put the trailer right here and yeah campfire <laughs> so let's get started all right so trying something different this time got this new Makita 36 volt to 5 amps let's see how this does I'd did a little bit of stuff around my mom's house with it and it was actually working really well. So put some fire and chain oil in there, throw a couple five amps on it. We'll see, I think this is a 14 or 16 inch blade. Not, I don't remember for sure. I'll put a link below, it'd be in the Amazon store if it works out good and anybody wants it. surprisingly well so it's got I think it's got more rpm than my gas one um it did throw the chain but i think that's just because the pinched between the tree but this does have a toolless cha chain tensioner i remember how this works so i let that cool get back on there we did not use if you can see that any of the battery life yet so yeah Pretty good. Only got a couple more to cut.
Well, that escalated. I uh, yeah, end up camping where I always do. So let me show you what happened. So I got in here and I got jammed. Wasn't enough space. <clears throat> so had to disconnect and spend the next two hours clearing this little path and uh, barely was able to get the camper out of here and tried to camp over here it just wasn't level enough so we're back to where we started I'm exhausted <clears throat> uh, a little rubbing on the tree there scratched up the bumper on the jeep trying to squeeze in some tight spaces but got it out one piece for the most part but i am beat that was a a lot of extra work I wasn't planning on doing. <laughs> so I just had a little lunch and uh, went through quite a few batteries with the Makita chainsaw. Actually, we're still working pretty well. I'm happy with that. And I got a little less careful and dipped it in the dirt a few times and it didn't just immediately dull like my gas one did. So I don't know, uh, it's working. So we'll just stick with that. I did bring my charger and my generator. I'm not sure yet if I have the energy. We'll see tomorrow to do any more cutting but leaf blower always works just as well. Uh, the Jeep, so I haven't really shown anybody. I got the two inch Mopar lift and 37s, 17 inch black Rhino, something or another's. Still got the Fox shocks. And um, yeah, this thing was nice driving in here. See, I got some rubs on the bumper. Oops, not an excuse to get a better bumper. <laughs> got my shower bag up there heating up because I am filthy and need a shower. One thing I did because going from 33s to 37s, I had to uh, get a tuner kind of deal. Got one of those Taser Mini, and uh, once you figure it out, it's actually not that bad and it does a lot of stuff. So I've got it calibrated for the tire size change. We're still running the stock gearing, but you can change that on there as well. One neat thing, it allows you to run your sway bar disconnect at uh, in two-wheel drive or four high. And usually factory, it'll only let you do it in four low. And that made the bumpy road coming up here much, much better. Really softened up everything. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah, other than that, that's all I've done. Just driving it. Gas mileage pulling this up here. It was about 200 miles, I think. And I'm uh, down the including climbing up the mountain we're down to about 12 11 8 something like that so it is what it is but still a good fun truck the camper i'm after that debacle i'm a little even more frustrated with it but it had been so much easier just to have a tent on the back of the jeep like i did used to when i first got the land this thing is just a huge liability towing it on the highway trying to maneuver through tight trails <laughs> so I, I'm still on the outs with this thing. Luckily, the prices have gone up. A new 2022 model like this is around 20 grand now. So at least I hopefully won't lose any money. But I don't know. Uh, a rack with a hard shell rooftop tent on there sure would have been easy. I'd already taken a nap. <laughs> so I'm going to keep unpacking and getting things set up and out and enjoy this a little bit Ooh. well a lukewarm shower in 60 degree weather doesn't make you wake up nothing will i come back to the back and uh try to respond to some posts and things like that <sighs> i'm all feeling refreshed find my way back and uh had a little bit of fire going but it wasn't very wasn't taking very well because it had rained up here pretty pretty good last week. So just gonna hang out and relax tonight. And tomorrow we'll hit the uh, three mile gorge. See what we can do with the trail finder three. <sighs> well, I just want to be real with everybody for a little bit. Uh, people commented on the last video about not being stressed and you know it's. I know it looks like from the internet's perspective that I'm living the dream and just quit my job. I'm going full-time YouTube, but I, there's a lot of kinks in the plan that I wasn't expecting. So 
I, I, it's that shop build took me way longer than I thought it did. And that was stressing me out because I, I need time to find a place to live, find a place to build or find a place to set up shop and figure out where I'm going to base this new full-time YouTube gig out of. And I, it, that's what we mentioned earlier. There's no, I didn't even consider how well I had everything set up at the other house and how easy it was to produce and make content. I mean, I could just come home from work, take a nap in the recliner till six, get up, film a video till nine, go to bed. And it was, everything was there. It was easy access. It was easy to use. So right now I'm staying with family and uh, yeah, it's not that easy to produce. That's why we're using the camper to film some stuff in and made that new scale garage to try and, uh, you know, get some semblance of familiar familiarity to the channel and uh you know and that's i think that's good content because that's that's creative stuff and that's that's what we're all about is what i'm all about so right now i need to unwind and i, I know a lot of people commented because they see i bought this land up here and this is great this is i would love n nothing more than to be here full time but this is remote like this is four-wheel drive access only um no water no electric no phone service maybe with a cell phone booster if i build my cabin a quarter mile that way i might could actually get some but i won't be able to upload videos um yeah i mean this is nowhere and then there's other things that take into consideration with that as well as like i'm still single like I know as appealing as living in the woods alone is I, I would like to meet somebody someday and maybe start a family, but <laughs> there's a lot of things to take into consideration and it's, uh, it's become a little over overwhelming for me, but I don't know. I do like being out here, but I do like being in Florida too. Cause I got so many friends and, and connections in Florida. This from the ultimate scale truck expo. I mean, that, I've actually I've been looking at stuff down there as much as I have back in Texas. Um, right now, I mean this is Oklahoma. And this is this is as cheap as it gets. I could build here. It's remote. I would spend probably five to ten thousand dollars on water and rain catchment, solar, just to have a minimal system where I could actually function and film and do stuff. And then I still have to traverse uh, about four or five miles of all-terrain pass to get to a town where maybe I could upload from my cell phone, but I don't know. That was what was perfect about where I was at. It was country enough at the time when I bought it, it became a little too developed and that's part of the reason I sold it and got out of there. But I mean, it was used to be, you could stand on your back porch naked if you wanted. And I had fiber optic internet so I could upload a video in about two minutes. And it was just fantastic. So up here, I mean, I could go anywhere naked, but I cannot upload videos. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of things to consider. That's that's the main thing. I'm trying not to rush into anything. So many times in my life, all my decisions have been based off of necessity or it just, you know, you have no choice. You're forced to move. You're forced to change jobs. You're forced to uproot yourself. So I've actually got a chance to do what's best for me. And I need a little time to figure out what that is exactly. So that's, that's what's stressing me out. It's not trying to make a scale garage for a video. It's trying to make a scale garage at my mom's house with a dog that's obsessed with me that wants to hang out with me 24 seven and doing it in space that's not mine that's the main thing I, I can't set up shop fully in in something that i'm borrowing so that's that's all the stress that's that's where the stress comes from it's not the hobby it's not the youtube stuff it's just the life stuff on the back end of it all so yeah life love and pursuit of happiness <laughs> we'll see what happens first but i'm just gonna chill out here and enjoy this like i said i wore myself out earlier Trying to clear this pass back here that still is not very passable. <laughs> but I got some thinking to do, so we'll get on that.
All right, got a good night's sleep. Actually, a lot of sleep, so gonna look at the gourds today. Had a little fun last night. You can see they got the Jeep filthy, but uh, found that abandoned, I guess it's abandoned, it's missing a lot of the steps, the fire tower, and that was pretty cool. Got some videos from up there. So that, uh, yeah, other than getting the truck filthy, it was fun. So I got the gorge cleaned out. I'm just kind of taking it easy this morning. Got up, went for a little hike. Got a little bit of internet service. And uh, I thinking this now, if I run the 18th scale, it's going to have to be like the 5.8 mile gorge instead of the 3 mile gorge. It's going to be interesting to see how this does because a lot of these obstacles are pretty big and that truck is pretty small. Some of the stuff through here I think will be pretty good, but it's going to be ill-equipped for a lot of this stuff pretty good size rocks but I'm gonna get that thing set up and we'll have a little fun this morning all right guys change of plans I ran the little truck and I'm gonna give it its own little video because I know a lot of people want to see how that actually performs so I won't throw that in here with this land vlog <laughs> so we're gonna take a whole red out and uh, yeah just get re-familiarized with the track because uh, it's completely different when you're running a small scale. And then we'll do the head-to-head -head shootout of the Trailfinder 3 versus the Leaf Sprung Trailfinder 2 Forerunner. And that'll be a separate video as well. But I'm going to give you some RC in this one. So as soon as I get this antenna wire tucked away. <laughs> so old Red still trucking along just fine. All right. Except for these extra long radio... ESC wires. We've got our 1080. We've got it on the DX5 Pro somewhere. There it is. Up there. And Torque Master Expert. Something's binding in the front. Oh, my shock's messed up. After the rough roads riding around last night, I probably should have took the RC trucks out, but oh well. <laughs> got our Reefs Triple Four. So this thing should be Rock solid. That little truck's, that little 118 scale's got me pumped, man. I, I'm digging that. All right, what are we on here? Old red. Uh oh, something's wrong. I think we've got a link rod come loose or something. Yeah, I'd say so. It's just hanging out down there. Our pan hard. Sweet. All right, I still got my little boom racing trail survival kit that I got my very first year at USTE. That thing has been very handy. I can't believe it's just gone completely. It's probably in the back seat of the Jeep somewhere. Let's see. Hope there wasn't a washer on that anywhere. Come on. There it goes. Yeah, I thought that front steering seemed a little sloppy. A little sloppier than normal. It's the problem with dragging these things all across the country to events. They rattle loose in the car. Actually got some screws rusting on here. It's kind of disappointing. All right, I think we're good. A little Bauhaus tool coming in clutch again.
Well, something's fishy. I'm not sure what's going on with the front suspension. It's not, I know the rears have just about all, lost all of their fluid. So, expect that. But the fronts have lost all their fluid as well, but very stiff. I think it's to do with that three link, that pan hard. It's hard to tell, everything's covered in shock oil. It wasn't compressing as much as it used to. That's pretty even. May just have to loosen them up a little bit. See how that does. But not too terribly worried about it. Um, always had issues with leaking shock, especially on this truck. Every shock I've ever put on it leaks. I think that's just the case with all RC shocks. They just all leak. It's the nature of the beast. So anyway, that's all we're going to do with this guy. Just wanted to try to get an idea how to do some filming head-to-head -head for this other video with the TF3. But I have, this was a brand new Helios 3 cell. I've got two exactly the same for the other trucks. They're both freshly charged and ready to go. But that'll be a different video, so let's get back to the camping vlog. All right, guys, so I spent the better part of the day driving tiny trucks, making some videos. Uh, the gorge is pretty much dried out now, but all this down here was standing, so I'd do some drainage work. Trying to keep things flowing. Runs down this way, zigzags through all the leaves out there and crosses the road and goes off across the street probably gonna have to go out there on the road and uh do a little digging too because it backs up there a lot but that's part of what keeps the gorge interesting because it's different every time i come we had some pretty serious storms last week and uh changed quite a few things <laughs> since the last time i've been here but this section is still the absolute best the 10 scale trucks just really had to flex out in there and it's pretty cool um this section back here needs some work still from here and we got this little hill climb which is not really anything difficult there's just scattered stuff and this this middle section really needs some rocks but i can't ever bring everything i need at once and i really need to bring the the wheelbarrow so i can load up rocks from other places and bring them down here so what we did that one time I brought it right there for the pizza rock bypass and uh, there's another little natural creek that rose up runs up there past where the uh, firewood is and it all flows down into this and out so still a lot of work to be done something's been bedding down in here digging some holes and stuff I've seen a lot of that hiking back today there's a lot of little worn areas where things have been spending the night. I haven't seen any deer on the property today. I've seen quite a few coming in and then riding around last night, but uh, nothing up here today. I thought I heard one earlier. It was back there, kind of angry it sounded. <laughs> seen a couple lizards, look like little salamanders. And they, what they sound like raccoons running across these leaves. <laughs> Freak you out and then you see it and it's just a little four inch lizard running around but still not a lot of bugs which is really nice and it's just so dang quiet the only thing making noise right now is this blowing in the wind and there's still a lot of leaves on trees and stuff out there and every time we get a good enough wind you hear them all rustling around but other than that it is pretty much silent Walmart hammock for the win. <laughs> oh, this thing is pretty nice. I mean, it has this little bag that it folds up in. It also makes a cup holder, especially if you have a nice cup. <laughs> if you don't forget it every time you go camping.
Ooh, what's up guys? So I had to come back and check out the tower. Um, I, I'm not brave enough to go all the way to the top. I'm not big on heights. This is high enough. This is higher than I went yesterday. But I wanted to see, I smelled smoke today. You can see there's some fires out. You can see the haze all around. But uh, yeah, I saw a sign that said some land was for sale up this road. And I'm sure if you can see there's electricity to these towers. So it's like, man, that would be perfect if I could find some land on the top of a mountain with electricity. <laughs> But I got the realtor information. We'll see. Yeah, it looks like you're driving through somebody's yard. There's an old abandoned homestead down here where they built this tower situation. There's three, three radio towers and then this old fire tower. But man, that view, that view is wild. So my land, you've got this ridge here dips down and then you have that ridge and then you have another ridge that you can barely see the edge of and then that's the main ridge that we drive in on so it's that second to last one where my land is down at the very end down here uh, the town is over there you can kind of see a few buildings in there um, there's some windmills up on that hill or mountain <laughs> And then there's a bunch of fires over here. And there's some more over there by the lake. I haven't got to explore that lake very much yet. It's quite a ways to get back. It's further than I remembered it. But yeah, it's up there. I don't know how many more ridges it is to get to my buddy Trent's land. He's on the other end of this mountain. This little mountain kind of goes, there's a road in that valley and it goes and hooks back to another town. <laughs> so I don't know. This is, it's just, I'm sure the camera's not doing it justice. You can see the layers of haze in the air and there's four or five mountains off in the distance. I really don't have the courage to go up top. These stairs, not in the best of shape, but at least I have shoes on the day. I wore flip-flops yesterday. place to be. Yeah, I was going to go up more, but that's not digging it. We're going to head down. <laughs> They're already sketchy enough. I'm walking on the outside edges where there's metal. It's missing the first eight steps coming up. Sure that was to deter people from coming. Here's a Jeep. Well, guys, the end of another day, listening to the sounds of the off-road park. But, just hanging out here, watching the sunset. Not going to be as cold tonight as it was last night. Got the lights on on the camper. Still got my hammock up. It got down to around 41 last night. It was pretty chilly. I woke up about 2 or 3 and had to add an extra layer, but that sleeping bag I got is pretty fantastic. But, uh, yeah, probably going to pack up and head out in the morning. Not punching any time clocks, and so I have to keep telling myself. So I am not, I don't have to be anywhere other than where I'm at. And it's hard to get used to. But, got to get back and get some videos uploaded for you guys. And uh, do some searching. Figure out where I want to be. What I want to do with my life. So we're just gonna hang out here, see if we can uh, catch any of the Starlink satellites flying over tonight. It's the only place I've ever seen them before. I'm gonna wrap it up, guys. Appreciate y'all watching. Stay tuned for the other crawling videos coming from 
this weekend up here at the land at the Three Mile Gorge and keep a scale. See y'all next time.